Island, there lives a dear old train. He's a little tram engine. He doesn't look like a steam engine at all. You all know who he is. It's Grandpa Toby. I mean, uh, Toby the tram engine. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. Welcome back to another episode of the Really Useful Podcast. I'm your host, uh, Bonnie, also known as Old Teapot 7. I'm here with my co host, Sigourney Diesel. So, yep, welcome everyone to another episode of the, real, of the uh, Really Useful Podcast and everything. Uh, yep, we are right here at the seventh book of the Railway series, Toby the Tram Engine, and we are almost done with the very first season of Really Useful Podcasts. Yep, for the ones that are brand new, uh, first of all, welcome. Second of all, we basically, this is gonna basically be, uh, the, the first season, that we're almost done with the first season, and the first season's gonna have nine episodes, uh, this is the seventh episode, the last ep- two episodes we're gonna do are... Thomas's Christmas party and Gore and the Big Engine. Spoiler alert! And after that, we're gonna be taking a little bit of a break because next year we'll be coming back with season two, where, where we'll be doing books nine through sixteen. Then twenty twenty four, uh, the rest of the series. You know, you know how it works. And so today we got a very special book, and this book was one of my favorites. Is Toby the Tram Engine? Here we go again with the awkward silence. <laughs> But uh, well, I don't know what you want. I don't know what you want me to say. We don't have a live audience here with us. <laughs> so Toby the Tram Engine. Now this book, honestly, this was the first book I can remember. You know, liking a lot. So, like I was very shocked to see how different the the Toby stories were compared to the TV adaptations of them. Well, to be fair, like uh, 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 again, this is season one. We're kind of talking about here, at least in terms of in the UK area and all that. Like. There were, uh, uh, the only really major difference, uh, there is, um, I guess we could say this right now, because, like, again, like, I'm pretty sure everyone already knows the story, uh, already knows these stories by heart and everything. Uh, well, actually, there's two, uh, there's two main differences. Uh, one, uh, one main difference is that, uh, one main difference is that, like, you know, in the TV series, they probably don't say who the gentleman was, where, uh, where it's, like, in the book and everything, they don't reveal it until, like, the second story, which, you know, I still feel like, you know, the book does better. I agree. And, uh, and like, revealing itself. Actually, I actually need to rewatch the, the the TV episode because it's been a long time since I've seen the the episode. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like for the most part, like you know, nothing has really changed in the episodes. All the stories are pretty much the same. But I guess the only major change you could say is just more like the location, like Toby's line, which is just more like a role and everything. I guess you can say. It. Well, basically, uh, in, in the up in the TV episode, it takes place on Sodor, but in the book uh, version, it takes place in in the in the UK. Uh, it does take place in the UK, and, uh, UK, and it definitely does show off on like you know, yeah, uh, yeah, Toby's tram line being like you know a tram line, because you know for those that don't, uh, those that don't know, tram lines are like you know, uh, one uh, one of the few lines in which like the track also runs by either runs right next to the road or literally on the road too. Yes, and so today we got a history portion. Finally, it's been a while because we went on hiatus with them for a little bit because we couldn't find too much information. But for this book, I do have quite a bit of information for you guys. So let's start back in 1951, and this is this is after Henry the Green Engine was published, and so to, uh, so w- w- Wilbur Audrey and his family went to East Anglia for vacation, and uh, Wilbur Audrey's best friend, which was the Reverend Teddy Boston, was was given the the opportunity to ride the J70 steam trams, which are Toby's bases, if you don't know, by the way. And so the Reverend Teddy Boston invited invited the Reverend and his family to ride on the J70 steam trams cab, and that's what and that was basically what Wil, what what inspired Wilbur to write this book and create Toby as a character. But but you know what else happened that year? They also invited him to the Tallyfern Railway, but but Wilbur Audrey had to decline that because you know he had to go to East Anglia, and if he had gone to the Tallyfern Railway, it's possible Toby might have never been created. It's possible. It's also possible we could say that, like, you know, had he not gone, um, 
Uh, well, actually, did he ever say when, uh, when, uh, when basically, like, you know, Toby's bases were starting to be, you know, scrapped or something? Or... Uh, they were start, they, they were starting to be withdrawn around that same time. Yeah, because in because guess okay. guess who was introduced around that time? Well, guess what locomotive was being introduced at that time? Well, uh, well I know it was a J fifty. I know, like, you know, Toby was based off on a J fifty and everything. I it was, was the BR. Later, like... It was the BR British Rail Class zero four, which is Mavis's bases, basically. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they were basically being introduced, and well, you know, new technology replaces the old one, and the old one gets scrapped. You know how it is. Well, yeah, technology and all that. Uh, that's just basically like, yeah, with any technology. Uh, actually, I don't know if this is correct, but I heard that, you know, one J-70 was earmarked for preservation, but unfortunately, they couldn't get it in time, and it was scrapped before they could, they could finally buy it for preservation. It would have been awesome to have a J-70 still around. It would have. Well, anyway, uh, well, anyway, the only thing I was gonna say is just like you know, had Wilbur, uh, had Wilbur had gone to the Tally Flynn Railway, I think it would still be possible. Maybe not like you know, may maybe not like you know, as possible. But I think it still would have been possible. He still would have vacation where Toby lived and everything. It's possible Toby might have still existed. Uh, but how much of that possibility would be? Um, it's kind of hard to say. It would. It would be low because that was around the time that the J70s were starting to be withdrawn from service and starting to be scrapped. The last one was taken out of service in 1955. Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Yeah, and so actually, actually. You know something else about that holiday they had that Christopher Audrey wrote on the on the on the footplate and ever oh, yeah. since uh, oh yes that's uh, oh yes that's right I do remember that and that's actually you know uh, one, uh, one, uh, one of the bases for like you know one of the scenes that uh, Wilbur would put into his book yeah and that, and ever since that day uh, Toby's been Christopher's favorite character which makes sense and and, and actually when you think about it uh, when you think about it it's actually very sweet. Yeah, and 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 you and and when we get to his books, you're gonna tell that he loves Toby. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, he wrote uh, Toby the Tram Engine, and it was published in 1953. Uh, 52, 52, 52. Yeah, 52. 52, 52, because in 53 was scored the big engine. My bad. Yeah, in 52 something happened, which will pro uh 52 something happened, which that won't be till the very last episode. Yes, something very important happened in England around in 1952. But but we'll but we'll get to that in the very last episode. So don't you dare Google the answer. No, no. So so yeah, with the history portion out of the way, let's get to the stories, which I'm definitely excited for this today. Alrighty, well we got four stories. Uh, yeah, we're back to the four stories now. With, and permanently. Uh, series. And permanently Good. because because uh because Henry the Green Engine was the only book to have five stories. All right. Well, you went first last time with the very first story of Henry the Green Engine, so I go first with our very first and introduction story to Toby, Toby and the Stout Gentleman. All right. All right. So Toby and the Stout Gentleman um, is a story that basically uh, gives us a good introduction to uh, Toby. Um, it gives us an introduction to who he is as a tram engine and everything. Uh, what the, uh, what did he usually do on his own? You know, tram line and everything. Uh, basically, you know, takes uh, takes trucks from factories and everything to the big stations, so the big engines can take him to London and anywhere else and everything. Uh, during that time, uh, he meets a very polite uh, stout gentleman and two of his grandchildren, who all seem to like Toby very much. And likewise, Toby uh, Toby really does like his new friends very much, so much so and everything that uh, they basically visit uh, visited Toby for pretty much a fortnight and everything. So basically, after they get done riding and everything, um, it turns out that their ride was pretty much going to be their last ride ever, because as the months pass and everything, it's uh, pretty much obvious that Toby is no longer needed and is uh, lying. So pretty much after he does his service, one. For one last and final time and everything, he gets put to the shed and everything. However, before the book turns into a sad ending and everything, it gives us a little gleaming of hope. But that will be revealed in the next story. story. Actually, before you give your thoughts on the on the story, it, I just love that that illustration where Toby is like like sad and 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 the and and he's and the trucks and the coach and and Henry are full of people. That it, it's just heartwarming, but at the same time, kind of bittersweet because you know it's the last day, and you know. You know, uh, you know what? It is true, and this is something. Um, again, the railway series book clause brought up. It, it's also really a perfect example of how people behave like that in real life. Uh, basically, uh, if anything, that story probably in, uh, in, inintentionally taught us is that people really easily take things for granted and such. And yes. this is something. Uh, and this is something you kind of handed on a little bit too. You know. 
when you were talking about how, you know, new technology makes way for, like, old technology. And Toby has seen that, like, on his own line as the years go on and everything. You know, port lorries and cars were all hot shit and everything. Toby, uh, Toby and his brothers were basically a hot shit and everything. Like, you know, they had a lot of jobs to do. They were able to, you know, take people around uh, around places and everything. People loved them and couldn't get enough of them. But as soon as, uh, but as soon as like, you know, new technology happens and, you know, new and better ways of, like, getting the stuff transported and everything started to come and everything, people started to, you know, not care about Toby or his brothers anymore to the point where basically his brothers were getting scrapped and everything left from right and such. And Toby, you know, being the last surviving chander is, people started, you know, treating him like shit and such and everything, you know. Saying stuff would be like, oh, isn't he a funny little tram Isn't he everything. quaint? Yeah, isn't he quaint or, uh, or as Bridget, you know, once thought, is it electric? Oh, <laughs> which actually really offended Toby and everything. And again, when they learned that like uh, Toby was going to be given his last ride, that's when people are going to start caring about him. That's when they started giving a shit because they're basically like, "Oh no, we're not going to see Toby again." Even though like you know we never really cared about him to begin with, but let's give him for our last ride. Why not? Because you know we're never going to see him again. Yeah. And, and it's just like you said, uh, that's where like you know the bittersweet moment come. And again, in the TV series, like you know the TV series really also pumps that in so well too. Like. There's no music or anything, like, you know, uh, or, he or hell, there wasn't even no music at all, too, when the bad stuff happens. When you see those shots of Toby turning along his line, knowing that this is going to be his very last day and everything, no music is playing, all you're seeing is just Toby slowly trundling away and everything, and it's lying. And then once the music starts kicking in, like, again, it really does hit home that, it really does hit home that bittersweet moment you mentioned. It does a very, very great job on showing people that, like, you know, all good things are eventually going to come to an end, and... Hopefully one day, hopefully, like, you know, that thing that is going to come to an end. Hopefully it might find a new chapter, or maybe, or maybe it's for the best that, like, you know, it ends right now before it's too late. And we're, st and we're seeing that a lot with, you know, uh, some, with, uh, with TV shows, uh... Yeah, yeah, pretty much, like, you know, an equivalent, like, you know, TV shows, or, or even, like, you know, some old retro, you know, video games and everything that was once popular are slowly going to be, go away as, like, time goes on, even popular computers and such, too, so. Even, even music, you know, uh, in the 80s, rock, rock, uh, heavy metal was the thing, but in the 90s, you uh, know, rap came on, came in, and, you know. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, uh, oh, yeah, music, definitely, yeah, uh, uh, again, like, you know, uh, if, uh, if, if Toby and his cell has shown us anything, uh, has shown us anything, is that wherever it becomes a popular trend, it's not going to be popular for much longer. And once people start, uh, once it starts going away or starts not existing anymore, that's when people are going to start caring again. Uh, they're going to start longing for those old days to come back. Exactly. Exactly. So, go ahead uh, uh, and give so, your thoughts on the story. Uh, 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 honestly, like, going on that alone, like, you know, I think that's why, like, you know, this story really does work and everything. It really, uh, it really does set up as, like, a perfect introduction to, like, you know, who Toby is and everything too, and this is also the very first time where uh, we're on a railway that's actually not Sordor and such. We're actually on a very different railway and everything, seeing a new engine for the first time and everything. And, and, and to be fair, like, you know, you don't know that this is, like, well, well I guess technically, like, if you read the forward and everything, you know that Toby is going to eventually come to Sordor. But, uh, but if you de uh, but if you never read the forward, or if you probably just like look past it and such, you don't know that uh, the Toby that you're seeing and everything, this is gonna be his last day on this railway and everything. And so pretty much that like you know, I think what Wilbert has done, like he's done actually a real good job to introduce Toby just enough that by the time you get, by the time you're growing attached and love this character and everything. You already feel, you know, sorry for him. That line's gonna be closing down, and wonder what's gonna to happen to him and such. Like, you know, is he gonna find another job, or is this it for him? And I think, uh, and I think that Eni actually does a real good job on paying a somewhat happy Eni, but still also leave, you know, the readers more interested as well too. Especially that line about boy in the next story. Like, you know, when you put a line like that, that's definitely gonna one pe That's definitely gonna make people want to read the next story right away, and that's actually really clever. Indeed, indeed. I, I, I will. Uh, go ahead, you go first. What, what are you gonna say? I was gonna say like that. That was really well done. You know, I, I, I like you know Toby listened and, but I sh but I shan't say no more or I should spoil the next story. That mm -hmm. was really well I, done. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I think Ringo Starr actually like you know did a real good job on like delivering that line in the UK. Which uh, was speaking uh, was speaking of narration and everything. Johnny Morris actually does a really good uh, Toby voice um, in this book. Like uh, like again, his audio is pretty good and everything. Um, although, like, you know, Bonnie and I were discussing that, like, you know, yeah, this is the book where, like, yeah, more lines are gonna get skipped from Boris's narration. And, yeah, the line about, like, you know, Bridget, you know, asking her grandfather, like, you know, is Toby electric was actually not, you know, recorded in the, um, in the audio version. 
Which is a shame, honestly, but I I can sort of understand. I guess, I guess if you want to make the argument, maybe like you know more stuff that like you know didn't really add that much to the story and everything. And to be fair, like you know Toby really forgets about that scene real quickly and everything too. Like you know, while one uh, one, uh, one moment he uh, one moment he was just basically whooshing steam at her, and then that and then and the next he just suddenly forgives her. Yeah, I think I think yeah. After he talked to the stout gentleman, he just felt better, and you know he forgot about the insult. Pretty uh, pretty much. It's actually, uh, it's actually, I think it was a real good move as well too. Mm hmm. And uh, I, I want to talk about uh, Henrietta because you know. She... Oh uh, oh yeah uh, oh yes. Let's talk about Henrietta and Toby and everything. Now, go ahead, you go first. I mean, you know, the the TV show has uh, loves to pair them both as like an elderly couple, and I love that a lot. You know. I can't. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine Toby without Henrietta. Those two together are some of the best character pairings ever. If you think about it, pretty much. It's a, uh, it's, all, uh, it's almost the same thing. Like you know, you cannot picture Thomas without Annie and Claire. But like you know, when you see Toby and everything, like you know, you, uh, that, uh, that's how you, uh, that's who you picture with. You picture with him and any uh, with uh, Henrietta and such. Um, and, he, uh, and even in the book too, there's a reason why Toby still brings Henrietta out. Like you know. You could tell right off the bat that their chemistry is really good. Like uh, it's like you said, it's almost the equivalent of like you know an old mar uh, an old elderly married couple and everything that still love each other, you know, very much and will be with each other no matter what. Um, mm -hmm. I, th I think uh, I think the TV series actually also does a very good job too on showing off that period, especially when you get to the Brenna era in the CGI series. Like you know, I love uh, I uh, I love what they did for like you know Henrietta in the CGI series. They gave her a face finally. They gave, they gave her a face, and they also gave her, and they also gave her like you know a very you know different personality. It actually goes really well with Toby's. I love uh, Matt, I, I forgot her name, but the one that voices her, it's such a good choice, man. Yeah, I uh, yeah uh, yeah I agree. For uh, for what I've never for what I've never seen a little bit of season eighteen and everything, they really did nail Henrietta just right. Anyway, so the only last thing I just want to talk about real quick, um, it's just basically the illustration, like you know. The illustration for Toby's line, beautiful. Absolutely really beautiful. And Toby himself looks really good, too. Yes. Uh, C. Reginald did a good job with this illust with the illustration for this book. I think this might be the best illustrations he's ever done so far. Until we All get right. until we get to one particular book, but I'll, I'll, I'll save that for season two. I think I know which book you're talking about, so looking forward to that one. Mm -hmm. All right, so is there any thoughts you want to add to before we move on to the next story or before we give our ratings? Yes, uh, aside from the illustrations, uh, I think the story is like a really good introduction to the book and it gives you and it gets you excited for the things for the for the next three stories to come and see what's gonna happen to Toby. Pretty much. Yeah, so go ahead and give your rating and then I'll give mine. Alright, well I will say uh, I will say this though. Uh, originally I was thinking about how I was gonna rave the next few stories, because pretty much after this, uh, while Toby doesn't play as much of a ranger role and everything, uh, okay, actually to be fair, like in, uh, in the second story he more plays like a secondary character in a sort of sense, and it's also, it's also the same way in like Dirty Objects, but in Dirty Objects I argue like, like he's also just as much of a main character as James is. Uh, but in the last story he's barely there in the last story, like you know he's only just more, more or less mentioned in, uh, in, uh, in the story itself. Uh, but I'll get more. Uh, 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 I'll basically get more than that once we get into those stories too, because uh, all the stories actually does play to my overall feelings with the book as well too. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, for me, in terms of my rating for uh, this story and everything, um, again, it's a good, solid introduction to uh, Toby. Nice introduction to his line and everything. And again, that cliffhanger actually really does work in like inviting people to go ahead and read all the next story. So, you know what? I'm gonna give this story a nine out of ten actually. All right. Well, my my rating is you know a point higher than yours. So I give this story a ten. It's a great right, introduction so. to the book. All right. So nine and a ten. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that you mentioned this earlier when we started recording the episode. But one thing that you know kind of ruins the TV episode is that they reveal who the stout gentleman is in the TV episode. Whereas, I mean, I mean to be, I mean to be fair. I guess the reason why they did that is Brent and Dave were probably like, you know, yeah, we're not really fooling anyone who the stout gentleman is. So I guess we can just reveal it right now. Yeah, I kind of understand the decision. You know, it's it's Sir Tom and Hannah. It's the fat controller, anyway. So, so uh, I I don't blame them for making for making that decision. So, uh, but, uh, but I do agree. Uh, but I do agree. They could at least you know try to pretend like you know they don't know who he is. So, anyway, now we move on to the next story, which is oh boy. Thomas in trouble. Thomas in troubles. All right. So there's a line to a quarry that runs that, that runs into Thomas's branch line, and there's a crossing between the road and the and the railway, 
And every time Thomas passes there, you know, there's there was there used to be a constable, a policeman. And Thomas liked policemen because the constable that just retired was friendly. However, there was a new one when he passed by. And he decided, and he thought he would be friendly, so he whistled, you know, good morning. However, the, the new constable is was grouchy, and he, he was basically angry that Thomas disturbed him after, you know, he, everything was quiet, and then everything went to chaos. So basically, after constable picks up his boot and, you know, puts it on, he basically starts to kind of insult Thomas in a way, if you think about it. Well, not so much more insult. It's just more that, like, you know... He, he, uh, he's kind of taking a bad day out right at Thomas and everything. The best way to describe this police officer, he's one of those where it's like, you know... He doesn't he doesn't care about if the person was having a good day or not. He's just gonna... Well, no, not more so that. Uh, 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 he's kind of one of those that's more strict when it comes to law. And I guess you can kind of say maybe he's abusing his power and such. I don't know. Yes, like he, 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 he is because uh, according to... To the research I did, this constable that uh, in the story actually, you know, thought he was gonna get a quote-unquote promotion by promoting out of date, out of the outdated laws, and basically everybody started to dislike him, and and the 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 the, the boiling point was when he basically ticketed his uh. I think it was the the his boss's car, and that that's basically what caused the was what they what caused him to get relocated after afterwards. Okay. Cause, yeah, cause, yeah, I was gonna say like you know he doesn't really outright insult Thomas. He's just more like uh like yeah going what you said after that example. Yeah, he's more or less abu uh, abusing his authority and everything because Thomas is not wearing cow catchers or anything, you know, side plates and such. And like uh, it's like you said too. Yeah, he's using the law to basically justify his reason and everything of why you know Thomas is a regular lawbreaker and such. Yeah, so basically, you know, the the the, 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 the policeman, you know, tells Thomas where's his cow catcher. Thomas, Thomas tells him he doesn't have a cow catcher. <laughs> he doesn't catch I, cows, I, my I, bad, I, catch I, cows. I, I, actually, just to take a little break on that, I actually love that. Uh, whoever's there waiting line and everything always delivers it just real perfectly. It just, it's just Thomas instantly saying, like, but I don't catch cows, sir. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it, it's actually really funny and uh, in a way actually cute, too. It is. It is. And so after that, the constable, uh, you know, tells him that that he's dangerous to the public for some reason. Even though Thomas has been through that line hundreds of times and never had an accident. So after that, you know, the the the, the fat controller gets a phone call saying that Thomas got, you know, the fat controller gets a phone call and he goes and goes to investigate what's the matter. He tries he tries to argue with policemen, but the policeman tells him that law is the law and can't change it. So uh, exhausted after arguing with them, he tells he tells that they're probably gonna have to make cow catchers for Thomas. However, Thomas says that you know they, they say they, they say that they'll laugh at him and and they say that they, he'll look like a tramp. And then that then the fat controller instantly remembers Toby from his holiday, and well you know he calls Toby's controller and and Toby's brought to Sodor and well the story ends in a in a good finale where. Where Toby rings the bell and frightens the policeman, and Thomas and Toby were fir our firm friends ever since. So Thomas in trouble. I I personally like this story, honestly. Yeah, that 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 policeman is a big is a big asshole, if you think about it. But you know, I, it, I mean to be fair, like, pre I'm pretty sure that uh, Willard was like you know desperately trying to find like you know a, a really good excuse about like you know okay how can I bring Toby to the soda without like you know just saying he just arrived on soda and that's it and such. So, so, uh, so, like, you know, he probably, uh, I, I, either he probably took a look at, like, you know, old laws and everything about how trains, you know, knee cow catchers and such when going on public worlds and decided, like, hmm, you know what, this actually does sound like, you know, a really good story idea and, and uh, could actually bring, like, you know, a good reason to have Toby be on Sodor. Yes, that's actually true because in, in, uh, in the Wispec, Wispec, and Wispec, I, I don't know how to pronounce the, the place where the J70s were, J70 steam trams were. The Wispec and Upwell, yeah. uh, Upwell tramway. Basically, uh, the J70s needed to have their their side plates covered, basically, and so mm -hmm. so to prevent cars from crashing into them. And yeah, so, yeah, pretty uh, yeah, pretty much ca uh, cars, people, animals, all the likes. Yeah, and and yeah, so I can applaud Wilbur for for you know uh, thinking of 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 you know of that. So basically, he can bring Toby to Sodor, and I love one thing Johnny Morris did with the policeman. Aha. Yeah. Ah -ha! I will admit it does get a little bit annoying, but it's it's pretty well, funny. Yeah, I, I, actually, to be fair, like you know, it actually does fit with like you know the policeman's you know characterization and everything. 
Yeah, it does. And for some reason, I don't know why this makes me laugh, but I just I just laugh when, when the story says the Fat Controller argued with them, too. How dare, how dare, how dare you say Thomas is damaged to the public? How dare you? I don't know why it makes me laugh for some... It just makes me laugh for some reason. I don't know why. I, I, I could just, I, it's just I imagine him, you know, just arguing. I, 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 I can just imagine, like, you know, police officers swarming around the fat controller, and he's, and he's just turning himself around trying to argue with all of them back and forth. But in the end, the law is the law, and we can't change it. <laughs> the law is the law. If you have a problem, tough shit. Tough shit, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so, I, I don't have too much to say on this story, honestly. I, I, I prefer the TV episode a little bit more, mostly because, you know the visuals basically but but even 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 though you know i love the illustrations that c original dolby did for tom for the for the crossing and the, at the very yeah. beginning of the story yeah and actually fun fact we will actually see that crossing again in later stories yes actually it, it comes back in percy's predicament and okay. and before and before you you before people start uh, questioning why is percy in the tramway when toby only toby's allowed to cross it or mavis basically well Around the same time that that story took place, that that was around the same time that the constable that that you know called Thomas a regular lawbreaker was actually relocated, so so Percy could pass by with no issue, and that's why you see him on the on the on the crossing. And well, I don't have too much to say on this story. I think this is a pretty good. I, pretty, I think this is a pretty good ending to to Toby's story on bringing him to Sodor. So after thinking about it, I'm gonna give it an eight. That's that's okay. the that's right. the that's the best honest honest you know that's the best honest rating I can give to the story. All right, well so far your rating for the book is going to be uh, eighteen out of forty, which is actually pretty good. So it's actually a good sign right there. Mm-hmm. So anyway, uh, as for me and everything, uh, Thomas in trouble is actually uh, yeah uh, yeah Bonnie actually said it best and everything. Yeah, it is a real you know good little well part uh, part of good continuation of picking up on uh, how they Toby came to Sodor and everything. Uh, but also, uh, but also serves as a nice little side story about you know, what was Thomas doing and everything. While you know the fact controller was on vacation and such too and everything. And, uh, the more I think about it, like you know, like just tell you a little bit more about Thomas and such, which, uh, which again makes sense because again, like you know, um, they did need a reason as to why Toby became sorted. And again, if you read the forward, you know that uh, Wilbur say that Toby is working with Thomas's branch right now. So, so it does make sense that you know sooner or later that Thomas is going to get his own story as well too. Uh, and again, as a way to you know bring Toby to Sawyer was actually pretty, it's actually pretty clever, pretty neat. Um, again, there was lot, uh, again, there's lots of really good, funny moments and everything. Like you know Thomas, Thomas instantly answering that he doesn't catch cows and such. <laughs> uh, to the fact controller basically wiping his face with Thomas acting shocked about like you know be, uh, about like not wanting cow catchers and such and everything. Uh, to even Toby leading his battle at the uh, police, which actually the TV series actually does you know. Uh, way, uh, way better too, like, you know, when they show, like, you know, the policeman's, you know, reaction to it and everything. I will say, though, like, you know, R uh, Ringo has the best reaction exactly. to the police a a after Toby rings his bell. Oi, you! Alright, so, uh, in, I think th this is a long time ago when I used to use Instagram, but I saw an edit of when, of when, uh, the policeman said, hey, you, and someone made an edit with, with, with Toby actually crushing him to pieces. <laughs> it, it basically was, hey, you, and Toby just crushed him, crushed him immediately. That was breaking the law, bitch. And actually, speaking of that, uh, uh, NWR 1991 made a good episode about, about it, you know, about, Tom, about, you know, the, the constable, about the constable, basically. It, you guys should check it out, it was a really good episode. I can't remember the name of it, but he did a really good job writing that episode. But yeah, uh, uh, but yeah, and again, like you know, I also do all the visuals real quick too. I also really love the look on like the fat controller's like office. It looks really nice. And anyway, fun so... and fun fact and fun fact for those for those TV to TV fanatics. Uh, during the scene where Thomas is uh is uh what well, Thomas said, listen to me. The fat controller's on the phone. Uh, the 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 high pitched talking is actually the narration. Yes, it is. Uh, Barney mentioned this to me, but basically, like you know. Uh, if you took that recording and basically slow it down, it's, ba uh, it's basically part of the narration being read out. Um, yeah. uh, what, uh, was it Ringo Starr being the narration? Or was yes. It, it okay. Yeah, it was Ringo Starr for all all dubs, basically. Okay, makes sense. And also, it also happens in Off the Rails. Anyway, so, yeah, for my rating for uh, this story, um, again, it's a good solid story to bring, you know, Toby back and everything. Uh, the visuals are pretty nice. So, uh, there's, uh, there's actually a lot of funny moments in here, too, and with good illustration, you know what? I'm gonna get the story another nine. Okay, uh, so uh, so we're actually both giving it like you know an eighteen out of forty. Yeah, so we're both tied. So uh, so far uh, so far we're both tied. So 
So depending on how uh, these next two stories are going to be, uh, maybe our ratings might be the same. Yep. All right, dirty objects. Here we go. Yeah, dirty objects. Here we go. All righty. So after Toby has been introduced to the island of Sodor, uh, we learn a little bit that what he does, he basically takes workmen to the quarry and everything, and pretty much, you know, he'll take them back home and such. And uh, at the junction where they take, uh, where they bring the workmen, they often met James, and J and uh, James and Toby don't really get off, don't really get along all that well. Uh, well, more so with uh, James. James does not like Toby at first and everything, calling them like, you know, dirty objects and everything. And uh, and actually, I'm going to break away the summary just for a little bit, uh, because this actually brings up with, like, you know, what Barney was saying, too, about Toby's characterization. Yeah, 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 Toby does not care what you think about him whatsoever and such. Uh, like, pretty much, like, you know, as long as he's being useful and he's doing his work, he doesn't care what you call him. He, he could die. He could he die. Will. He could. He could die today and still be happy. You know that he did a good job. In, you know with his working days. Pretty much, but that. Uh, but that doesn't mean he won't stand up for himself. And boy, does he stand up to James. Yes, he does. Right, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty much, you know, pretty much getting it back with like you know the whole bootlace incident, which. Some people wonder how does he know about that. Uh, most people pretty much come to the conclusion that like it's possible that maybe he might have heard it from like you know Thomas and such. Maybe Thomas somehow fi uh, found out from one of the other engines and Thomas told it to James somehow, and uh, that's basically how we know. Uh, basically it's a big it. possibility, honestly, because you know uh, because you know Thomas was around when James had the bootlace incident. He was, uh, he was, so maybe like you know, maybe someone like Edward probably told Thomas, and Thomas told Toby and such. Pretty much, uh, but, pre uh, but pretty much like you know, whatever it was, it was a pretty sick burn because uh, as Buck said, James got better than ever and just basically helped the way. So pretty, uh, so pretty much after that, the rest of the story is just focused on James uh, taking a good strain. Um, at first, uh, and pretty much like you know, because he is still sulking and everything, bumping the trucks, the trucks decide to basically pay him out, push him down like you know, Gordon's Hill. They get to the station and everything, and that's when James crashes into, like, some tar wagons, uh, right in the side and everything, and basically he becomes the dirty object, to which, uh, Percy and Toby actually make jokes about it, which, again, leads to another really good, a really good funny, uh, interaction between Toby and, uh, Toby and Percy, and a little bit of James as well, too. And, uh, pretty much, um, after, uh, Toby and Percy help, uh, uh, help clear the mess and help James back home, Toby is rewarded with a new coat of paint, being chocolate and blue and such. And uh, Henry is gonna be painted orange, and pretty much that's the story. Really good story. It is a, re a, a really good, solid story. And a uh, fun fact: it's actually one of Christopher uh, Christopher Audrey's favorite stories, and I believe this is Andrew Brenner's favorite story too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, I think yeah, that's true. Uh, so yeah, you got some real good combinations right here, and and, and yeah, it is actually really interesting. Uh, even in the TV series, we really uh, we really don't get to see too many interactions with like Toby and James. Like the only other interaction they're gonna get is like you know in the railway series, like uh, with uh, Double Heather and such too. I can't and, wait to get to that story. Yeah, I can't wait too. to get that story. Me too. Uh, uh, but pretty much like you know, um, uh, but it's a little bit of a shame because like you know their dynamic works really well. It's like you know rivals. Because as Bonnie said and everything, here we got you know Grandpa Toby and everything that like you know. He's old and wise, doesn't care what people think about him. He doesn't really care about his looks at all. All he cares about he is, cares, like, you know, He cares the least about the, about his image. Yeah, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, like, the only image he cares about is, like, you know, being a good, hard worker. Whereas James, like, you know, yeah, he's a good, hard worker, but, uh, but, uh, he's a good, hard worker and everything, but he really loves to keep his paint nice and shiny. Like, even if just one drop of dirt was inside, was, like, you know, left on his paint and everything, he would lose his shit. He would definitely lose his shit, but pretty, uh, but pretty much like you know, uh, their dynamic actually works off very well. Like you know, especially in the story. And uh, again, it's, it's a shame that we don't get to see too much of them. Like you know, after this and after the next story too. But for basically for what we got and everything and what we saw, it's good. Like you know, it's really good. Like you know, the story is definitely very fun. Crash itself, uh, the crash itself, it's really good. It's really intense. Um, again, like you know, the TV series actually does a good job putting that visual into, into like motion itself. I love I love that James suddenly lifts off the tracks and he crashes. That that was really well done. It was. It was actually it, it was actually really well done indeed and everything. That must have been a nightmare to film. Oh, I I, I, I can imagine and everything. I can imagine like I, I I can imagine it being a nightmare just to film with like you know any of those models to begin with, Espe especially when he had to do like a crash scene with them. But yeah, I don't have too much to say on the story and everything. Again, there are some real good funny interactions like you know. Both in, be uh, both in the beginning and even after, like, you know, the crash and everything. Yeah, the illustrations are pretty good as well, too. Uh, it's a good, it's a good solid story, in my opinion. It's one of those stories where I actually do love to read again from time to time and everything. So, am I ready for the story? You know what? I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8. I'm going uh, to give it an 8 for a very good story. 
All right. Well, as for me, uh, I agree. This is a very funny story. The interaction between James and, and Toby was amazing. Shame we don't shame we don't get another interaction until Double Heather, at least in the railway series, and even the TV series in Time for Trouble as well. Pretty, uh, pretty much, and pretty much after that, even the TV series, you don't really get to see their dy uh, dynamic uh, that much ever again. There is, well, there is only, well, there is one CGI episode, but who the fuck cares about that episode? Well, uh, uh, oh yeah, actually, I forgot about that. <laughs> Toby, about that Toby, yeah, Toby and the Whistling Woods. Oh man, that episode sucks. Oh, I thought, I thought you were talking about that other episode. That also kind of sucks. Wait, what other episode? Uh, oh, uh, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. You haven't seen too much of season 15, have you? No, the only one that I haven't seen is season sixteen. That's the only one I'm going completely blind. Oh, okay. Because okay. uh, 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 yeah, uh, yeah, there's another, uh, there's another episode. Uh, what's the season? I think it was season fifteen. Um, oh, I'm gonna take a look at this. Because uh, there was another episode of season fifteen that also played like you know, uh, their dia uh, their dynamic just a little. Bit. Oh, wait a moment! Wait a moment! I hate that episode. I remember now. <laughs> I hate that episode. James yeah. to the rescue. I despise that episode. Well, wait till we get to it then. Whenever we get around to it, whenever we're not dead. It's annoying. That episode. Uh, that episode is annoying. James. James keeps saying that he's he, steam trans can be useful. Okay, so now you're basically telling Toby he's a useless character, huh? Okay, that's enough ranting about season fifteen. This is a railway series. So I, going back to what I was saying, yeah, I, I love the character dynamic and 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 that payback and that and that crash was well deserved. Yeah, and yeah, and I, I have no, I have nothing else to say. So you know what? I'm also get, I'm get, probably gonna get yeah I'm gonna give it a nine. This is a really funny story. A nine. All right, uh, all right. So that's twenty seven out of forty, and mine is twenty six out of forty. So yeah, here we go. The last story, which actually fun fact, this is the first story. Uh, well, technically in the TV series, but more of a flashback. So tech so technically this is the first time where like you know the whole story was not adapted in the television. Yes, only a portion of it was. So it's called Mrs. Kindly's Christmas. So this story, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try and summarize as best as I can. So, so there's this old lady named Mrs. Kindly that lives in a cottage near Thomas's branch line, and she's always, she, as the story tells, that she's been sick. I don't know with what. And whenever Thomas and Toby pass by it, you know they're they're pulling a heavy train or something. Whenever they see the cottage and see Mrs. Kindly waving, they feel happy and they they say they can do, they can pull the train up the hill. Uh, however, one I think it was one Christmas Eve, I believe. I was like, uh, I think they said it at Christmas Eve, or at least it was getting somewhere close to Christmas. So yeah, one one day close to Christmas, uh, there was a huge landslide, and Mrs. Kindly put a uh, a a red a red sweater, and she fainted actually. And when Thomas when Thomas was coming past by when Thomas was gonna pass by the cottage, they noticed the the red sweater, and the driver said, "Oh, oh I think she's in trouble." And that's when they noticed that the landslide covered covered the front of the front portion of the track, so they can't go through. And well, they go and treat Mrs. Kindly, and after that, Mrs. Kindly gets uh, gets a big thank you from everybody, from the fat controller to Thomas's driver and fireman. And the fat controller gives her two tickets to Bournemouth so she can get better. The story ends with you know Tom, uh, with, you know the uh, you know they they sing Christmas carols and then they go back to the trains and you know the end. So this story kind of feels a little bit in well it, it is a good story but I I kind of feel it's a little bit incomplete. It's just that you know that the end the I think it, it has a good ending but you know it, it just feels a little bit you know how can I put this? Uh... It, it, uh, it's one of those endings where like you know it feels complete. But at the same time, you're kind of like, wait, is that it? Where's the rest of the story? Yeah, that that's exactly what I was trying to get, and thankfully, and thankfully, we're reviewing Thomas Thomas's Christmas party after this book. So, so, uh, so basically, uh, but actually, that book has a little, uh, also has an interesting backstory in it, in and of itself. Yes, and I'm very excited to get to that book in the next episode. So, so yeah, you know, aside from from that, from the from the ending, I, I actually do like this story uh, a lot. It's basically saying that even people that have disabilities can be heroes at sometimes. Well, not really much disability, because to be fair, like you know, it's not like you know Mrs. disabilities Kyle, like, or, or sick, basically, or yeah, sick. yeah, 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 pretty much, uh, pretty much, yeah. She was more sick. It's not really like she got paralyzed or anything by a Pokemon or something like. That. Not just saying, just describing that you know. I I I I, 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 I do know what you. So, uh, so this story, this story is pretty good, and it's a Christmas story, and you know how I am. I have a bias towards Christmas stories. I love this story. 
so I can't think of anything else to say. I think the story was really well done, and, you know, even though the ending feels a little bit, you know, it's one of those endings where I feel like that's it. I, I still like the story, so I'm going to give my rating uh, right now. I'm, I'm going to give it a 7. Alrighty, so for you, that's going to be a 34 out of 40. We'll get you a final rating soon, but first, my uh, my personal, uh, my take on the story. Go ahead. The story is fine and such. Um, again, uh, I do agree. This is actually a really good Christmas story, um, in of itself and everything. I do understand why, because uh, after a little, uh, after learning more about the TV series itself too, and like how the models were made during that time and everything, I do understand why Britt and David did not want to fully adapt the story and such. Because one, it's one of the few stories where it's more focused on humans and engines and such. Thomas does interact a little bit with Mrs. Kindly, and so does Toby in some extent. But it's really more focused just on, like, you know, the humans rather than the engines themselves. So there's not much action going on with them. And with the budget that Britt and David were working on at the time, I imagine, like, you know, they probably couldn't do too much with Mrs. Kylie to begin with anyway. They they, they, they couldn't, they couldn't, they actually couldn't add, uh, you know, like, in Percy's Promise, for example, they, they couldn't do the, the rain effects like they did in Percy's Promise because they didn't have the budget back then. Pretty much, and he also couldn't, like, you know, show the uh, human figures, like, you know, in the lights too long, uh, otherwise it would start breaking and such, too. So, it's basically one of those where, like, you know, I imagine Brent and David were just like, shit, what are we gonna do, and such. Yes, and they probably, I, I, imagine they probably... Them, like, I imagine them, like, you know, how are we gonna adapt this story? This story is a, it's a bit is a bit complicated to adapt. Well, not so much complicated, it's just more like, you know, there's not really much engine focus is what it is, and such. Yeah, I, I'm, that's actually, well, in my personal opinion, I don't know about you, and I'll let you I'll let you give your opinions in a moment. I think that was a smart move that they did to write a, uh, Thomas's Christmas Party, because, man, that was a really good finale for season one. I think, uh, I, uh, uh, actually, uh, actually, I will agree, like, you know, I do think that um, it was smart at least, like, you know, because I'm pretty sure, like you said, at the time they are just probably just, uh, they are probably just like, well, like, you know, we can't really skip it entirely but we can't really film it so so i imagine uh, they probably like you know call up wilbur and everything and we're just like hey um we like your last story and everything but there's not much engine focus so uh, so we actually did a little story of our own and we want to know if you can adapt it to your book i can imagine wilbur being at first being like motherfuckers did what and then after a while he was just like okay i'll write your book you know, because, cause, 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 you know, it doesn't have an, you know, it's not like Henry's Forest, for example, you know, Thomas's Christmas Party, you know. It's not it's not a Henry's Forest, if you think about it. Well, it, I mean, like, it's not, well, I mean, like, at the time, like, you know, they were still on a contract where pretty much, you know, all stories had to be, you know, at least be, you know, railway series stories first and everything, like, you know. They had, they, they, it was basically, they, they, they weren't allowed to write their own episodes, so they basically had to, uh... They, 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 they basically had to commission Audrey to, like, you know, write their version of, like, you know, their story into a book and everything. And that was the same thing what they had to do for Christopher, too, a few times as well, too. Which, again, like, you know, we'll get to those books when we get to those books. Yes. Uh, like I said, I don't have, I don't really have a problem with them, like, you know, choosing a different story to adapt. And, like, you know, the story they did adapt and everything. And I do agree, it is pretty good. And actually, uh, what, uh, one can argue, like, you know, either you know, either a Christmas Party or Paint Pots of Queens would have, would have served, like, you know, a good season one finale and everything. Thinking about it now in hindsight and everything, and considering again the budget they had to work with at the time, I think Christmas Party does uh, does actually does serve like you know a nice good finale to season one and everything, more so than uh, Paint Pots and uh, Queens and everything. A lot a lot of people say that you know they prefer Paint Pots and they, they they actually prefer Paint Pots and Queens to end off season one rather than Christmas Party. I actually disagree with that because you know. I, I mean, give, I mean, give, uh, yeah, like, uh, like I said, given the budget they were working at with at the time, they wouldn't have made it as grand as they did with in season four. I have to agree with that because in season four they had the budget from toys, uh, books, you know, VHSs, the toys and books. They had better equipment, they had better, you know, sound and everything. So, so yeah, I, 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 re I respect why they decided to not adapt Paint Pots and Queens, and same applies for Henry and the Elephant, basically. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, same here. Like, you know, I do understand their reasoning. Uh, there are some stories where I do understand the reason why either they couldn't adapt it or they had to make some changes to it too, which, uh, which again, like, you know, once we get to season two, like, you know, there are going to be plenty of examples in season two, like, you know, where they had to do plenty of that in some of the other books. Yes. Exactly. But yeah, uh, uh, so, uh, so yeah, so going back to the story itself, the story itself, again, is a really uh, nice, fine story for what it is. Um, uh, and, uh, and yeah, while we don't focus too much on the engines and everything, the human interactions, like, you know, were still pretty good. Like, you know, again, we got to see some more good illustrations. I like to look at the rain and everything. 
Uh, the look of the landslide was actually really good as well, too. Um, again, the story does a good job of setting up Mrs. Kindly and everything, and again, it also serves like, uh, serves as a really good build-up to once you get to, like, you know, the cottage and you see, and you see her red dress, like, you know, being flung out of the uh, window and everything. You're just as wondering, you know, you're just as wondering with the drivers, like, you know, this is kindly okay and everything, and, uh, what you found on what you did and everything. Uh, 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 again, like, you know, the ending, while I do understand why Barney and some people might say it's incomplete, I think, uh, I actually think the ending is really sweet and everything. It actually does cap up, you know, the book real nice. The only nitpick I will get to the book, uh, I will get to this. Let me, let me, uh, can I say, can I say it, if you don't mind? Uh, I think you already know, because, like, I already told you this before, but go ahead, what's my nitpick? It's the shocking lack of Toby present in the story. Ding, 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 yes, you're right, and your prize, you get nothing. Nothing, yeah, I know, yeah. nothing. <laughs> because I can't, because I can't mail anything to you anyway, because I don't have your address. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Anyway, uh, but, uh, uh, but yeah, like, you know, it, it, yeah, uh, yeah, it is a little shocking, I, like, Toby barely appears in the story at all and everything, like, you know. He only has Again, to... it makes me wonder if this is one of those where it's just, like, either Audrey couldn't think of anything to bring Toby in, or maybe he might have forgotten Toby and such, but probably to the last minute. Uh, Toby, is the last minute where bare he like, Toby is barely, barely a main character in the story. You know, he only has a one line, which is peep, 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 and that's it. <laughs> pretty, pretty much just, pretty much just peep, 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 and Toby's just like, okay, where's my check? Yeah, uh, yeah, like, you know, because, you know, when I think about it, it's another story where, like, you know, I think you could actually fit Toby in the story and everything. Uh, I think what you could have done, you could have had Thomas tell Toby who Mrs. Kindly is, and have Toby be the one, uh, have Toby's driver and fireman be the one, you know, checking her out and everything, making sure she's okay. But again, it's more of a minor nitpick, and, like, you know, it doesn't really, like, drag the story down uh, too much for me. Because, uh, like I said, you know, it is a very sweet story. I can see is. why it might be forgettable to some, because, yeah, uh, cause, yeah, the story is pretty simple, and because there's not really... It does drag, it, d it does see. drag at points, I will admit. It, it, it does, yeah, it does also drag at some points and everything, I will admit. Uh, but to me personally, I do have a soft side for the story. I think it's sweet, I think the ending is really good, the illustrations are actually really nice, and lots of really good character moments as well, too. So for me, I'm also going to give the story, uh, I'm also going to give the story a uh, 7 out of 10. Alright, and with that... Alrighty. We're done. We're done with Toby the Tram Engine. So now let's go to our final scores and give our final thoughts on this book. Alrighty. So for you and everything, let me make sure I got everything right. You gave the first story a ten. Uh, correct. You gave story number two an eight. Correct. Alright. You also gave story number three a what was it, an eight or a nine? A nine. Alright. And you also gave this last story a seven. Mm -hmm. So your score thirty. Your final score is a thirty-four out of forty, which means your grade for this book is a solid B. All right, that's not that's not okay. That that's actually better than I thought I was going to. All right, so for me, my score is actually one lower than yours, a so thirty-three out of forty, because I gave the first story a nine, I gave the second story an eight. Uh, no wait, no, I uh, no wait, no, I also gave it a nine too. I, uh, oh, oh wait, no, no, no. Okay, so I gave story one and two both a nine, uh, because I remember like you know we were tied for a while. Uh, so, yeah, the first so, yeah, story you gave it a nine, another nine, and the next story I gave it an eight. And this one I gave it a 7. So yeah, 33 out of 40. Which means for my score is also more a B minus, which is still not bad. It's still not bad at all. You know, I think this is the first odd book that does really well. It does, uh, actually, it does. Like, yeah, this is the first odd book where it did not get a bad grade whatsoever. It, it was a, it, it, it was a, uh, it was a book that actually met our expectation. Yes, so. Well done, Grandpa uh, well, Toby. Well done. So let's hope it can. Uh, I, I, I actually I know when we get to season two. I, uh, I think Edward the Blue Engine might be the next book where it actually might get a solid rating. But that's not even till the very next season. Yeah, we still have we still have two more books to go with this season. Yeah, I have a feeling that the next odd book that might get a bad grade, or at least maybe not a bad grade, but maybe more so like an average below grade. Let's say, at least at least in terms of you. I don't know about me just yet. Well, at least in terms of you, because I know how you feel about that one story. I think it's a possible. I think there's a possibility that Twin Engines might 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 be an average score rating for you. Oh yes, yes. I'm not gonna say what story it is, but there is one story in that book that I did that I just find ridiculous. Yeah. Well, so once, uh, yeah, once we get to that one, who knows? Maybe that might be the other one where it's just like Barney's gonna snap and he's gonna go crazy. So yeah, we'll see about that. Uh... We'll, we'll see. But, but, uh, uh, but we're not talking about those stories right now. We're talking about Toby the Tram Engine. A very good story, actually. This was, this was a very good book and everything. So, uh, so, so yeah, going to what I was saying, like, you know, when I was reading the book and everything, and, you know, um, I did know that, like, you know, after the first story, Toby was more or less going to be a secondary character than a main character and everything. 
And at first I was worried that that might hurt the book's, you know, final score rating for a little bit. But once I started reading the story, it's like, more so like, you know, with the second and third story, Wilbert, act, uh, Wilbert actually made good use of Toby's secondary character in those stories and everything. He actually did make it feel like Toby is the actual character that actually does belong in the story. Because, like, you know, I can't picture any other character other than Toby that belongs in, like, you know, stories like Thomas in Trouble or, like, you know, Dirty Objects or anything like that. Or even Double Heather. Or, or, or even Double Heather, once we get uh, once we get to that story. And, 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 yeah, and yeah, even the Double Heather. Double Heather is probably, like, probably the reverse of, like, you know, Dirty Objects, where it's just, like, you know... The story is really more about Toby than it is about James and such. Yeah, so especially if you think about it, it's basically Dirty Objects 2.0, uh, uh, in uh, a way. Uh, in, a certain, uh, uh, in a certain way, it is, yeah. Uh, except uh, except the only uh, the only difference is that Toby still gets the last lab, and James uh, James looks like a jackass. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, Weber actually does a really good job of putting Toby into these stories that, like, you know, even in Mrs. Kindly Scripts, it's like, you know... Uh, uh, even, uh, even if I do prefer that, like, you know, maybe Toby should have been the main character in the story, he was still used just, uh, just well enough to where he actually does belong, like, you know, in the story itself, too. Uh, just reading the book again, like, it does give me, like, you know, happy feelings and everything. Whenever I do read the book and read, you know, Toby's stories again and again, they're, they're, uh, they're just heartwarming and such. And there's a reason why, again, Toby would end up being, like, you know, one of the important cast members in, um, in the show. Yes, he he made he made it as far as to the CGI era, and sadly, you know, he's the only character not to return in All Engines Go. Not uh, not uh, not yet. I'm still waiting for that chance where maybe like he might he might come back, and uh, you, uh, you know, if he does come back, maybe uh, maybe they will make uh, maybe they will make him to like you know an old grandpa character. I'm I'm a little bit worried if they decide to bring him back. I am worried because you know we all know what happened to Edward and Henry. No lines whatsoever. It's it's like it's like it's like they're they're kicking them in the balls because you know they they like, oh oh look because oh look those are the two important characters get the fu get them out of here we don't need those two yeah pretty completely yeah. completely forgetting that they were the first two the, the first two important characters in, in, of the whole franchise but 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 yeah what, what were you saying by the way uh I was just basically oh saying yeah yeah like, I remember now so yeah he's one of the most he one of the most important yeah, yeah, characters yeah, yeah, in the yeah, cast yeah 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 Toby's one of the most yeah important characters that like you know for good reasons too like you know like I said uh, like I said he's a character that's old and wise but he's also not afraid to like you know stand up for himself when people start you know bullying him and there's also there's also another thing I want to mention about Toby's character all right so I'm gonna compare Toby and Edward for example all right so Edward is the type of person the type of character that basically you know tries to shove up some sense into the character. Whereas Toby is the type of character where basically, you know, he he basically tries to explain to the to the to the newbie what what he has to do. The newbie doesn't listen. The newbie fails and embarrasses himself. Toby laughs and and then shows him the correct way to do it. I fucking love that. In a uh, uh, in a uh, in a way, you are right. Yes. Um, I would actually argue too that more so that like you know Toby like you know when, when someone doesn't listen to Toby instead of just like Toby pestering them he actually is just like well all right you're a funeral man. Let's see how well you do and such. And, uh, and actually another thing about Toby, and this is something like, you know, the Rare Series Book Club actually just brought up in their, like, you know, uh, recent podcast with Kaos and such, is that, like, you know, whenever it gets makes fun of, uh, whenever it gets makes fun of, like, he actually just, you know, tries to ignore it and actually doesn't try to, like, you know, say anything, even though you know, like, you know, what they're saying, you know, hurts them. Where, uh, when Toby, like, you know, if they would do, you know, something like that to Toby, he would just be like, so you have chosen death, I've seen. And, you know, I don't know if you read Mavis, the story, but you know what's even funnier about that story? You know, so Mavis, so Mavis does the usual, you know, she stops in the wrong place and the trucks hold her oh, back. Oh, I think I know where you're going with this. Go, uh, go ahead. All right, so Mavis, the, the trucks hold her back, right, normally? And yeah. then And then Toby's, you know, cross, still cross with her after, you know, she she called him an old fussbot. And then the illustration shows he was only a hundred yards from where Mavis was. Which is fucking hilarious. It is. <laughs> I fucking love Toby, and there's a reason why he's the he's my he's one of my favorite characters, and he's the star of my channel. Okay. I just love I just love him as a character and who he is. To uh, Toby is a really good character. To uh, Toby uh, Toby is great. Like you know, um, uh, uh, actually, it's, actually, funny that you mentioned it because Toby was my very first character. Like you know, uh, when I got into Thomas as a kid and stuff. So VHS I had, I basically had two VHSs where both of them like you know started a Toby episode. Like you know, I had Races Rescue to Runaway where they had Toby and Toby in a flight. And uh, uh, actually, Toby appeared actually twice and at VHS and such. And like um, 
then I had Spills and Chills, which also had another Toby episode with Toby's discovery and everything. And uh, uh, and yeah, I do say with great confidence that like you know Toby is also one of my favorite characters too. Thomas might be my all-time favorite character of the whole show and the books, but Toby is second is second place when it comes to my top ten favorite characters from the whole franchise. And yeah, I agree. You know, Toby and the Flood, Toby's discovery, and heck, even Ho and Laurie, they're pretty good Toby episodes. They, uh, they are, and like, you know, even, uh, even in season 6 and season 7, like, you know, there were still some pretty good Toby episodes out there. Yeah, Toby had a little land that was pretty good. Toby's windmill, he, he, was, he was actually good as well. And even though a lot of people don't like this episode, I think You Can Do It Toby was also good. Uh, I do agree. I think, like, you know, uh, You Can Do It Toby is actually, like, you know, a decent episode, to be honest. It actually does show, that it, it still shows a little bit of, like, you know, Toby's strength as well as a character. So, so yeah, that's enough praising Toby. Yeah? You can, you guys can tell how much we love this character. He, uh, he's a good character. Read his book. Definitely. Definitely. I we definitely recommend this book. Check it out if you haven't, and give it a read. And also check mm -hmm. out Johnny Morris' narrations. They're very good. They are. Yeah. So that's that's the end of the seventh episode of the Really Useful Podcast, uh, Toby the Tram Engine. Well, we got two more books to go, and then the finale for se then we got then we end off season one. I, I, I'm I'm starting to get sad because you know the, you know it, it feels like yesterday that we started this first season. It it it, it actually did flew by real fast. Like you know, it did, uh, it felt like you know it it it, it felt like we just started this and already we're all we're, and already we're about ready to finish it. Well, the the podcast as a whole, not entirely, because we we're still gonna we're still gonna continue, but you know we're gonna be taking a break from you know reading the books because it's been it's been while it's been fun, it's also been pretty exhausting. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So, but that guys, thank you so much for watching the seventh episode of the Really Useful Podcast. If you guys enjoyed this episode, don't forget to hit the like button, and if you guys want to see more episodes, hit the subscribe button as well. Also, don't forget to check out our channels, all T Bot Seven for me and Sakoa the Diesel for Sakoa. And he also has a gaming channel, which I'll also leave in the description below. Alright, so with that, this has been uh, Bonnie with my co-host. Sakura the Diesel. And we'll see you guys in the next episode for Thomas's Christmas Party, which is a book I'm definitely looking forward to. Same here, it's actually going to be our very first spin-off book too. Yes. So take care everybody, and we'll see you guys real soon.